started talking about um, the person of the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to be drawing and strength from John chapter 14. The book of John chapter 14. Hallelujah. Sometimes you don't know how much God cares for you. You don't know the extent of what he has done for yourself. You don't know the length, the breadth, the weight of what God has done a lot in your life. Don't let the circumstances that surround you be cloud your opportunity to be grateful to God. He has kept you is a grateful God, is a wonderful, is a gracious God. We go along with the determine how joyful you'll be in life. He has given us everything. As a matter of fact, we are complete in Christ. We are complete in Christ. Say with me, I am complete in Christ. Woo! I am complete in Christ. I am not in lack. I am not deprived. I am complete in Christ. Material things can never determine my value. Can never determine my, my, my virtues in Christ. I am complete in Christ. Whether I have a car or not. Whether I have a house or not. Whether I have money or not. I am complete in Christ. Tell me I'm complete in Christ. Glory to God. He has done us well. To him be all the glory. Give Jesus a big clap of hand. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Well, without wasting more time, let's look at this scripture so, so, so powerful. Talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. Very important that you develop a relationship, a cordial, effective, productive relationship with the Holy Spirit. Like I started on Sunday, I spoke about, you know, the danger of making the Holy Spirit to be something that you use for, you know, for majorly activities. Holy Spirit is a person. He echoed that in my, 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 my ear this evening. He said over and over, I am a person. I am a person. Now look at what he said. He said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. Now, when God told me this, showed me this scripture, he showed me something to me. He said, if I ever said that Jesus was talking about this, he said to his disciples, I'm going to give you another kind of me. Another kind of me. And that connotes that Jesus was a person on earth. And he said, I'm going to give you another person. So, Holy Spirit is not a thing. Holy Spirit is a person. Say a person. Say a person. Holy Spirit is a person to relate with, not a force to be used. Holy Spirit is a person to relate with, not a force to be used. This is very important. This is very, you know, vital. For every child of God that want to have a progressive and effective journey in life, he must develop and also accommodate, acknowledge the place of the Holy Spirit. He said, I will, give, I will, I will ask my father and he will give you another helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor with death with this on Sunday. I'm not going to go there today intercessor, a counselor, threatener, standby to be with you forever. So you are not supposed to be in lack of the relationship with the Holy Spirit. You are not supposed to be someone that is dry or empty. The Bible says it's going to give us forever. So the Holy Ghost is going to be having you know, relationship with us forever. Look at verse 17. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot reveal, receive Take to his heart because it does not see him or know him. But you know him. Say, I know Holy Spirit. 
you know him and um, what did he say that but you know him because he the Holy Spirit remains with you continually and will be in you continually Holy Spirit is always with you don't you know some people we get swallowed up by environmental influences someone could say I'm alone no you are not alone as a child of God he said he will continually be with what? With you. You can't be in a situation where you are deprived. Remember, we are going forward. I said, I will, I will not leave you as an orphan. Someone who has no father, no mother is called what? An orphan. Holy Spirit said, no, I will not leave you as an orphan. Or comfortless. Bereaved, that's his. You will not be mourning like you lost someone. No, I will always be there for you. Glory to God. And helpless. Don't ever say, I don't know what to do. I am helpless. No, Holy Spirit is always there to help you. So I will come back to you. I will come back to you. He's already in town. Tell anybody, Holy Spirit is in town. Jesus is in my life. Say it, Jesus is in my life. Remember that Jesus is a citizen. He's already on earth. His spiritual personality is on earth. He's living through the Holy Spirit. This is big. Jesus is living through who? The Holy Spirit. The existence of the Holy Spirit on earth is the existence of Christ on earth. Jesus is living in in you, living through a believer. Jesus is active in a believer's life through the person of the Spirit. After a little while, the world will no longer see me. That is the physical Jesus. The physical Jesus was seen 3,000 years. And afterwards, he went back to the Father. The Bible says he seated in the right hand of the Father interceding for us, advocating for us, right? But he said, the world can no more see that physical Jesus. But we, we have him. We see him. He said, you will see me because I live. You will live also. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Aren't you happy about this statement? That you will live, you will not die. So I will not die. Your business will not die. Your ministry will not die. Your finances will not lie because Jesus did not die. Verse 20. He said, on that day, when that the time comes, you will know for yourself that I, I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. What a combination. What a communion. What a communion. What a partnership. Jesus is in his Father. Because he is a revealer of his father. He, come, he came to reveal his father to the world. And because he's a revealer, now we are in Jesus. That's why as a child of God, we got the responsibility to go talk to people about God. Because the same attribute of Jesus has been deposited in us. So we reveal the father to the world. That's why the, 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 the Holy Spirit in a man's life is the continuity of the work of Christ in that man's life. We have responsibility to continue to review Christ, review God to the world because that is the primary agenda of the coming of Christ. Now, the work has not finished. The work has been you know, given to us as children of God to continue in that duty. Why did Jesus die, resurrected? Why did he die and came back to life? Primarily, it was for relationship. It was for the world to come to know God. It was for the world to come to know the love of our Father. The, the cares of our Father. Nobody can love you like God. Nobody can care for you like God. So Jesus came because of a relationship. 
So if anybody presenting another gospel that's talking about the material what, the material what of the earth, they have defeated the place of Christ in your life. Christ is not for things. Christ is for relationship. No wonder the veil in the temple was torn apart. There was no veil. There was no more hindrance. The partition was scattered. We are no more having the wall of partition. We don't need to struggle to assess God. God is living in us. Because God is indwelling in our spirits via the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad that you have the Holy Spirit? Aren't you happy that Jesus lives in you? Ha! Aren't you glad that God the Father has the place in your life? Tell yourself, I'm part of the Trinity. Oh my God. Say, I'm part of the Trinity. I am not wired to be deprived. I am not wired to be rejected. I am not wired to be like an orphan on earth. God is with me. And God is for me. Hallelujah. Say, God is with me. And God is for me. Well, briefly, I want to tell you something tonight. I want to tell you what the Holy Spirit is not. What the Holy Spirit is not. Number one, Holy Spirit is not a force, although he is powerful. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is not a force, even though he is what? So powerful. The power that God, the, the, the operations of power in our kingdom has been relegated to Holy Spirit. He's the carrier of power of God. But yet, he is not a force. He is a person. Number two, Holy Spirit is not a dove. Even though he is so gentle and calm like a dove. He comforts us like a dove. But it's not a dove. That symbol does not mean the person of the Spirit. That could be his attributes, but that is not his essence. Hallelujah. Is somebody picking what I'm sharing tonight? You cannot misplace the person of the Holy Spirit for activities, for symbols, for attributes. That is not his very essence. Holy Spirit carries the nature of God. Holy Spirit speaks the, the nature of a person. He can hear. He can talk. He can smell. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So, time has gone. When you call Holy Spirit a thing, or when you see a symbol of a dove, you know, so many people have when they want to draw or say something about the Holy Spirit, they put up a, a drawing like a dove. That is not the Holy Spirit. Even though there is limited similarities in these operations. He has the place of gentility. It's a gentle spirit. Like a dove. Dove is gentle, right? But they can't look at dove and say, this is the Holy Spirit. I listen to what I'm saying. So you cannot call something that God has not called something. <laughs> Praise God. Amen? So, Holy Spirit is not what? A dove. I told you, okay, Holy Spirit is not an emotion. It means that Holy Spirit is not an emotion. Even though there are attributes of emotions, it can comfort us. Remember I said, I will not let you be comfortless. I will comfort you. Praise the Lord. But that does not mean that Holy Spirit is an emotion. It's not. He has the capacity to comfort us. Number three, or number four, Holy Spirit is not a wind. Though his movement is like the movement of winds. Unseen, but so much of his manifestation, you can view the manifestation of this of the wind, but it cannot see a wind, right? That's how Holy Spirit moves. Sometimes you don't feel him, you don't see him, but you can only see the manifestation of his 
person. It's not a force. It's not an emotion. It's not a dove. Even though it can be tender and gentle. It's not an emotion. Even though it has the capacity to comfort us. It's not a wind. Even though his oppressions can be likened to be a wind. But it's not a wind. And lastly, in that aspect, Holy Spirit is not a fire. Even though he has capacity to burn and purifies us. But it's not a fire. What do I mean by burning? Holy Spirit can burn and purify sin and iniquity. He can burn and purify sicknesses. But he is not a fire. Many people have come to know or say that the Holy Spirit is a fire. Holy Ghost, fire! That's not the Holy Spirit. He is a person. They are neighbor. Excuse me, neighbor. Holy Spirit is a person. Talk to somebody say, Holy Spirit is a person. He's not a fire. He's not a force. He's not an emotion. He's not a wind. He's not a dove. Those things can be likened to be his attributes, but they are not the very essence of his existence. Right? Of his person. Glory to God. You know, many of us choose to talk to people a lot than to talk to him. He has all the answers that you need. He has it. The Bible said, he will teach you all things. Hallelujah. So he has the capacity to know everything. So why do you ask your lecturer who is deprived and limited? Why do you always ask your uncle who does not have the final say, the, the needed knowledge to guide your life? Find a place in the spirit to work with him on daily basis because he knows everything. All things. When I saw it in the Bible today, I shouted, Holy Spirit, you know everything. Why am I looking for who to teach me something? I, I just have to just, you know, you know, clock in into his wisdom and his weight of knowledge. He will be teaching us some things to me that no man can know. He will tell you where you are and where, how you should go about your life. That mystery can be dignified by the knowledge of the Spirit. That puzzle can be changed. That, that confusion, that frustration, that, that answers, that solution can be handed over to you because the Spirit of God has enough. He knows too much. The Bible says his ways are past finding out. Whatever, whoever that God is to you, that's much more than Holy Spirit is to you. Whoever Christ is to you, that is who Holy Spirit is to you. Maybe confusion in your marriage, confusion in your business, confusion in your finances. You have tried all things. You don't know what next to do. You are in the middle of the road. You are confused. You are blank. Everything about it is getting dark, dark, dark. You have him blinking nice everywhere. Log into the spirit of God. He has everything. He knows everything. You're confused about this marriage guy. Marriage thing. You're confused about this guy. Confused about this lady. Log into the space of the spirit. He has every solution. He can tell you how to invest. He can tell you how to withdraw. He can tell you how to travel. He can tell you everything. Even to the lowest, the simplest thing you you think that you know. They can help you out. I pray for you. Every confession is dissolved tonight. Every confession in your life is dissolved tonight. Everything that's giving you, you know, headache, making you feel that is that how I'm going to end? There's a voice coming to you. It does sometimes, no, you will not end like this. You are moving forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Make him your best friend. Make him your best friend. Let the Spirit of God be your best friend. Talk to him on daily basis. In your study, let him be aware what you want to know. In your journey, let him be aware that this journey is, is he allowed? Are you allowed to go? In your business investment, you know, some people make an error. How can you have so much of the Spirit of God and still invest wrong? How can you have so much of the Spirit of God and still run into accident and have people, you know, tamper your, your, your life? No. 
with the help of the Spirit, with the availability of the Spirit, you're good to go. You can see that your future is bright because you always come to tell you what you do not know. Say with me, I love you, Holy Spirit. Say it again and again. Say, I love you, Holy Spirit. Teach me how to go. The Bible says you will hear a voice saying, not the voice of the mortals, not the voice of men, but the voice of the Spirit. It carries power. And you know, I was telling you on Sunday that one thing about the Spirit you don't know, the Spirit cannot be limited. When a man dies, check out from his this garment, this jacket called flesh. What happens is that you have been exposed to capacity to know things and to see things. You can be here and know what is happening in America. But the virtue of that capacity, spirits cannot be limited. That's why mysteries can happen you know, towards a person's death. And the investigators tried their best, they couldn't find what killed the person. But the person can find who killed him or her by the power of the spirit. Are you going to say tonight? I would like you to grow above this realm. Stay in the space of the spirit. Then you will know things before others will know them. You will hear about things before others will hear about them. You don't have to struggle and do everything for your life. Let the Spirit of God help you. See, you can help yourself. That's why he said, I will not leave you without a help. He knows that leaving you alone will create vacuums in your life. Will create lack of help. You will make you struggle so much. So he said, I will give you help. God will give you help in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'll close this night with this powerful word that I need you to go home with. Holy Spirit is sensitive. Then the Holy Spirit is what? Sensitive. Very sensitive. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is very sensitive. I said to somebody, the thin line, the, 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 the thin line between Losing, losing your Christianity and being on fire is so tiny. I had a, a young pastor who was on fire a few years ago. He said, Are you a boy today? So you have to hold on to your spiritual personality so tight. Find a place in your relationship with the Holy Spirit while you maintain your flow on a daily basis. That's why Paul said, I die daily. You can't be fire in the morning and in the evening, you're cold. See, most of us, where we are now, is not what we are supposed to be. Because we allow the fleshly, you know, activities to influence our person. We allow ourselves to be controlled by people around us. We allow what people say to affect what we are supposed to do for God. Anybody or any person that's not helping you to move faster and do more in your life concerning your soul, your spirit, and your body does not deserve your space. Build an environment where you are always on key with the spirit. You're always hearing what he said per time. You're always hearing what he should do per time. That will secure your future, secure your life, secure your family. Don't go buying into people's problems, buying into people's enmity, buying into people, <laughs> you know, people because somebody's having an issue with another person. Nah, because it's your friend. You have issue with that person. No. Shift from that realm of confusion and let the Spirit of God lead you per time. Lead you where to go, the kind of church you to go, the kind of relationship you should have, the kind of business you should do, the kind of man you should marry, the kind of woman you should marry, the kind of everything you should do must be based on the directive of the Spirit. Well, who am I without the Spirit? We are not born again unto ourselves. We are born again unto God. 
So if we have given our soul to God, the Bible says we are bought with a price. We are not the owners of ourselves. So if we have submitted our life to Christ, we also allow God to dictate for us, to lead us the path he chooses us to go. So you don't get stuck. You don't get cut off. While you're chasing. Take everything, but don't let them take the Holy Spirit from you. You know, basically told me a pathetic story. Early hours of today, if I close my fasting by 12 a.m. or 1 o'clock this morning, she was telling me a story about their circle a few years ago. And then there was a guy in their circle who wanted to marry a lady. I thought about that story today. I said, I'm a little bit afraid because sometimes we don't know the extent of what God can do. If you're afraid of a, a babalawu or afraid of a habalist, afraid of a witch, afraid of a occultic man. And they're not afraid of God. They're a joker. God is more dangerous than all these things I just mentioned. Who created the seed, the, the tree they are worshipping is God. Who created the place they sit down, the grass they carry, everything they do, God. That should be more afraid of that person than the person that you're afraid of. Devil didn't create, it, create himself. Devil was created by God. I you listening to what I'm saying? You should be more afraid of God than any entity on earth. So when she told that story, she said, there was this guy who, from another religion, you know, their religion is, they are this kind of tribe that goes well with every religion. They can marry the opposite religion and they are cool. There is nothing attached to their heart. Religion, just like I said to someone, I said, Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a life. Christianity is a relationship. Religion is an abstract. But Christianity is a life. So now we can't call us religio religious people. We are not religious. We are living a life. That Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 10, he said, I come that you might have life and have it more what? Abundantly. So life is the focus. Life in Christ was the primary intent for this transaction. Are you going to say now? So now, uh, this guy, you know, was to marry this girl, and then, you know, this is a, a, a very cool, you know, lovely Christian girl. She, according to her story, she was cool. You can see that she's a believer to the core. So along the line, they are proposing to marry, and then suddenly she started having this kind of, you know, red flag. And she wasn't comfortable. She traveled from Lagos to Calabar to see the guy. But there was this, you know, when you walk with the Spirit of God, even the last minute of that error, he will place some things around you that if you are so close to him, you will know. You will know. You will know. I was in Libya yesterday. I just got a security guy and the police. I told him something. Nobody. Today they told me what I say happened because I had the spirit of God. Most of the dangers and troubles you find yourself in is as a result of your deafness, your adamantness. You have refused to hear and receive the instruction from the spirits. That guy, you know, is a mad guy. You know, this guy was not in for marriage. You know that his his oppressions are to destroy your personality. Yet you are still going because of some, you know, material things that has been given to you. It was, there was always a red flag that this relationship will end into hell. That this journey, they're not supposed to make it. And listen to what I'm saying. Develop that, that personality. Make sure you grow. Grow out of this babyishness of Christianity. Grow out of this you know, childishness of Christianity. Let the Spirit of God lead you into maturity. Because most of these prayers will make senseless prayers. If we come here from this source, what he wants us to do, if we do it, devil can't tell us. So this lady got the point I said to the guy, well, the Holy Spirit told me that this can't work. So I gotta go. She left. This guy started making mockery of the spirit. They asked him, he said, that junk he said, uh, what, what nonsense, Holy Spirit. I don't imagine. According to her 
sorry, two months that time died. You know, the Bible says, don't pick up blaspheme against God, blaspheme against the Jesus, but not for my spirit. Because you know why? I begin to meditate on that. I said, God, why did you say this? Jesus is your only begotten, and you are God the Father. He said, the person that was bestowed power upon is the spirit. So when you blaspheme against him, he has the power to make alive and to kill. So he's more dangerous. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Remember, when Jesus died, the first day, the second day, the third day, who brought him out? The Spirit. He's the one that power is, was given to. And the Bible says, if this power that, 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 that resurrects Jesus dwells in you, dwells in you, that personality is all about power. It's as for Apostle chapter 1, verse 8, what did he say? He said, Thou shalt what? Receive, receive, receive. Talk to me. You will receive what? After the Holy Ghost. So he's one that every activity that has to do with power is reserved for. He's the one. Remember when God was in confusion? God was like, The earth was without form, there was no shape, there was confusion. And God was almost helpless. I said, no, I don't need to call Jesus Baker to come and construct uh, 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 the, the roads and part the waters and ship the firmament and ship the rivers and create the bushes. No, something I have that is bigger than construction company. His name is the Holy Spirit. So when you are making discussions about personality that carries the oil, the spirits, be careful. Well, let the girl go. Live your life. There are so many chicks in town, right? Why do you have to mess your life up by trying to, you know, please don't get to a point that you look at things of God, that God, what things, things that God calls sacred, you profane them. You speak ill things against them. Don't do that. You don't have the right. God did not give you the luxury to speak ill against men that carries oil. Because if, you, if God has condemned them the way you did, you will not choose them. But he chose them anyway because he's the one that perfects. God looking for imperfect people to perfect them. Is that, is that correct? So please, always be sensitive about who you talk about because the relationship with the Holy Spirit is a very, very dicey, very, very sensitive relationship. You know why? Number one, it can be quenched. If you are not careful, the Spirit of God can be quenched. You used to have a flow. You used to have a good relationship with Him. Suddenly, you don't have that inspiration anymore. You don't have that hunger. Your prayer life is dwindling. You, you know, you wake up in the morning, you're heavy. There's nothing about you that is quite interesting, interesting with the spirit. If to read the Bible becomes a burden and runs it for you. Why? You have quenched the spirit. Can be quenched. When something is quenched, is what? Cut off. You stop the flow, right? You stop the flow of the power. You stop the flow of the source of life. You stop the flow. You can be cut off. The next one is that why you must be sensitive about the Spirit of God is that you, the Holy Spirit can be grieved. Remember being grieved? You can grieve the Holy Spirit. How do we grieve the Holy Spirit? By, by our activities. Lies. Holding on unforgiveness. Is that okay? You can grieve the Spirit by being a talkative. You can grieve the Spirit by your way of life. By indulging in immoral lives, you can grieve the spirit. And when you grieve the spirit, you know it's like a like a dog, very tender and gentle. When he enters, you will know, but when he goes, you will never know. Except you are highly, you know, you are you gonna say that because he's tender and gentle. He never forces any man, never forces his will on anybody. 
So being sensitive is paramount here because if you miss that, you will grieve him, you will quench him. And when he's grieved, your life will turn to emptiness. There will be death. You know, the death of the spirit does not mean somebody still walking alive. He can be walking and yet the person is dead. Because the spiritual death is higher than the physical death. Is that okay? The spiritual death means that you are separated from your maker, from your father. So everything he touches dies. You do business, it goes down. You enter into relationship, it quenches. Everything he does now begins to have issues. You that people used to have embrace and like and love, give gifts, favor. Right now, things are difficult with you. People reject you at sight. Why? The Spirit of God has been quenched. Job said, The Spirit of God has met me, and the breath of Almighty God has given me life. So, do you know when I, I, I use food for years and they don't die, they don't get lost? I wear clothes, and when I give it to someone, look at that clothes, it's new because I'm, I carry life. I drive car, and then you, you touch that car like it's just new. Why? I'm carrying life. I'm looking like I'm looking long. Every time I'm looking long, I'm looking long. I say, my friend, I'm carrying life. There's no old age with God. But wrinkles, everything are falling out in your face. You see, let me tell you, sir, brother and sister, there, when you see a man that has no joy, is a sign of absence of the Spirit. Any man that does not, every time he's not happy, he's not laughing, he's not joyful, is an absence of the Spirit. A man that carries the Holy Spirit will always be joyful, will always be peaceful, will always be excited. But to laugh is a luxury. Every time your face looks so tightened, it's an evidence that the Spirit of God is not in view. I pray for you tonight. If you have lost him, he will return. He will come to help you. Say amen if you believe it. The last one I'm trying to say that if, as we conclude tonight, being sensitive is very vital. Why? You got to do, you got to be careful because you can vest the spirit of God. Vestation. What did I say? Vestation. You can vest the spirit of God. The way you relate, by the way you act, speak against other people, you can vest the spirit of God. Not eating your time, not paying your time, you can vest, not so easy, you can vest. These things are there. Don't let anybody deceive you. You can vest the spirit of God. You can anger him. You can make him angry. You can make him sad. And then he pull out from you. I pray he will not pull out for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. By your spirit. Lead us by your spirit. Satisfy us by your spirit. Transform us by your spirit. Heal us by your spirit. Prosper us by your spirit. Answer us by your spirit. Lord, we have no other person but you. And as you say in your word, you are, can't leave us without a help. Help us by your spirits. Everyone under the sound of my voice, let your help come to us tonight. In our families, in our businesses, in our marriages, in our finances, help come in the name of Jesus. Help us as a church. The Titans Assembly Global, help us in every endeavor of our life. We receive the help tonight. We receive 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 help tonight. Everyone that has come to Tabis tonight, help them as they go in the name of Jesus. God will help their finances. God will help you in that job. God will help you in that business. God will help you in that marriage. Help has come for you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Le koto prana brosha pa, le koto prana pala kotosha, jaga de prana brosha, 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, our Father. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And let the church shout amen three times if you believe it. Amen. 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 Give Jehovah God a good hand. Come on. 